whiskey barrel, poured a little solution of water and baking soda because there happened to be, as true with many whiskey barrels, used by wine and beer industries afterwards. So letting this soak for about 24 hours each side to kind of help dissipate and kill any bacteria that's gonna grow there. And then what we're gonna do is clean up these hoops. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean up any stickers off with a scraper and some rubbing alcohol. Then you're gonna sand the hoops down. These are stainless uh, galvanized steel. So we're actually gonna sand those down with about 400 to 440 grit sandpaper so we don't bar up the hoops. So let's get started. This particular barrel has some nail heads, so we're gonna take a little chisel and a hammer and remove those so that I can remove the hoops and take the tops off to get them nice and smooth. All right, so we took off the hoops, sanded it down, and then because the top of these is never level, go ahead and pop that off. I'm going to sand that out, plane that out. And we're going to power wash the inside because we have quite a bit of sediment left over in this barrel. So if you have a true whiskey barrel that has, instead of plated hoops, just the regular old exposed steel hoops, then they're going to rust a lot more because of humidity, environmental factors, where it was sitting in the, the rickhouse. So you'll take a chisel and lightly scrape around those hoops to remove that rust and such. So the next step for us is going to be sanding. Always wear the right gear, safety is important, gloves, eye protection, ear protection, and a mask. Fun part, cleaning, use wire brush, and get all of that charred toasted barrel blackness out of it. sanding start with belt sander with 60 grit and work our way up to 120 grit make sure you got your ear eye respiratory protection
stained and sealed. Now we're going to start on our Lazy Susan that goes in the bottom. So I have this swivel plate, 12 inch, just a good old round piece of pine good from Home Depot. And pull this barrel head from actually a wine barrel, but it's nice and flat. Looks good. It's going to be consistent. It's got a little bit of a wobble, you can tell. But once we get that on there and sure it up, it's going to be great. And because it's five o'clock somewhere, the Elijah Craig Rye to keep me going. This whole project is humbly endorsed by informally, right? Rio Tools. Yep. And then if that's flat, first things first, find the center. done with the barrel what we're checking is our lazy susan here is mostly level now my garage floor is not exactly level and you see there's a little bit of a play because the base of this barrel is bowed a little bit what we can see level line is almost on center i rotate the majority of that weight's going to be from this way again almost on center so pretty consistent we take it all out you can see that bowing in the bottom. So we sanded down a little bit over here where it was a high raised spot. You can see the dip in the middle there. Fortunately, our base isn't really going to touch that. It's just going to hover right above it, but it gives us nice clearance. Once we put that Lazy Susan in, we'll have plenty of room for the lights. And then this sucker will be ready for its new home. The other thing I like about adding that Lazy Susan is you're going to be able to see your bottles rather than them being uh, set deep down. Plus, I want the bottle in the back, so I just rotate it. So it works out really, really nicely. What we're going to add is a nice glass shelf about midway. I tend to base it off based on, yes, the, the barrel height, but uh, the tallest bottle for me, it's a E.H. Taylor. But we'll see or an Eagle Rare. Anyway, we'll add that shelf, add some lighting, give it, give it one more good cleanup and a coat of sealer, and we will be good to go. National Bourbon Day, so it's only appropriate that this bourbon barrel is finally finished and ready for its new home. So let's take a look. Mm -hmm. 